small. Oh, okay, now we're, we're live. Welcome everyone, my name is Shmuel and I'm the rabbi of Elwood Shul. And together with all of us at Elwood Shul, our president who's with us today, and our program director, Ronnie, who's with us today. And thank you to Ronnie for arranging this whole event today. We want to welcome you because we're all so excited to get into the spirit of Rosh Hashanah. And one of the things that we, one of the main things we all know about Rosh Hashanah is that we wish each other a Shana Tova Umetuka, a good year and a sweet year. So we're going to learn about sweetness today. Sweetness, and I'm going to invite Ben, a special Ben keeper, a Ben keeper, a special beekeeper, who's going to teach us all about bees and all about honey. So we all know all about Rosh Hashanah. But before we do that, before I hand over to Ben, another really important thing about Rosh Hashanah is this thing right over here. It has nothing to do Thanks, with bees sir. or honey. It is a, who knows what Thanks, it is? Sir. It is a shofar, very good. And this is something that we blow, as you know, on Rosh Hashanah to remind us that a new year is here and that we should be the best people we can be, the best adults, the best children. It's like an alarm clock and it reminds us to wake up and see what we can do to be the best person we can do. Who's ready for the shofar? Are you ready? Here we go. That was a long tequila gadola. All right. Here we go. I'm going to hand over to Ben. The floor is all yours, Ben. Welcome Ben Moore from Ben's Bees, who's going to tell us all about bees and honey. All yours, Ben. Thanks for Thanks. joining us. Thank you, Shmuel. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, boys and girls. Uh, Shana Toba to everyone. And uh, I'm super excited to be here. So uh, I'm going to talk lots about bees and the importance of bees and this beautiful, magical ingredient. Um, now, my name's Ben, and I've been a bee. I'm 43 years old. I've been a beekeeper for 29 years. So this is a true story. I, when I was 14, I said to my mum and dad, I don't want a puppy or a kitten as a pet. I wanted a beehive. So I had to save up my own money. I'm a first generation beekeeper. I grew up in the Yarra Valley, just outside of Melbourne, about an hour from Melbourne. And I had 14, I had my first bees. And I just love them. You can see I've got a little studio here. Uh, you have to mind my hands. I've been busy painting uh, bees. I'm gonna show you, I've got a factory here. Uh, where I store things and where I do pre uh, prepare the boxes and everything. And also too, yesterday, I was three hours driving out of Melbourne. Uh, I'm lucky because I'm a, a crucial worker and I get to I've got to look after the bees. So I get to travel lots. I don't really see anyone because I'm in the middle of the country. So, so I'm gonna, I've got a, a little four minute video towards the end, which I'm going to show everyone what I was doing yesterday. And uh, I'm gonna have a look, so we have lots to, to see. Um, so as I said, so I've been keeping bees for almost 30 years and I absolutely love them. And they're so important. I'll tell you why they're so important. I'm gonna talk about the honey and all the products and all the special things that bees do. But one thing that bees do is the pollination. So pollination, so with the food, one in every three mouthfuls of food that we eat has been pollinated by bees. So that's why they're so, so important. If we look within Australia, how much money they're worth, 
This is, this is not to do with honey, this is just a pollination. Bees are worth approximately $6 billion in Australia only, just for the pollination. That is unreal, that's incredible. So globally, all around the world, they're worth over $200 billion. And that's why they're such an important creature, one of God's creatures, so they're so, so important. Um, so the pollination, so the, how that happens, what happens is a bee will fly to the flower and, that, and the more times that happens, we'll get this pollination. So we get these fruits and obviously apples, you know, bees you know, need to pollinate apples and the apples need the bees. And obviously that's very symbolic as far as prosperity and uh, obviously the sweetness of, of honey. So that's why bees are absolutely so, so important. Now, as I said, I love bees. Everything I do is bee related. Here's a little postcard. <laughs> this is, you can see that's me. Here's of me kissing bees. And they're like now, boys and girls, I don't want you to do this because people tell me I'm a bit of a bee whisperer, right? But I can actually kiss the bees because I know their behavior. And I think they know me. And also too, it's actually been proven that bees have this facial recognition. So they can actually see the beekeeper. And also too, what's interesting, uh, as far as um, uh, beekeepers, we're one of the longest lived of any profession. So I think that's because we're so in tune with nature and these beautiful, beautiful creatures. So you can see, I absolutely love my bees. Now bees do sting. Now boys and girls, if you see bees in the garden, um, don't be scared. They're just gonna be doing their thing because they're going collecting the nectar and the pollen, but they also to collect two other things, which I'll mention shortly, um, which is absolutely fascinating. But if you see bees in the garden, don't worry because they're just gonna be do their thing because bees can sting, they can sting. They've got these little stingers. And uh, so that's why I never pick them up. But you can see here, uh, the bee has a stinger on, on just on the on her bottom. And what happens is with the, uh, the stingers, the bee doesn't want to sting. She does not want to, I say she because you know, they work hard. They work really, really hard, the bees. Um, so she doesn't want to sting, all right? Because if she stings, she will die. So it's a last sign of obviously defense. So, um, so there's, yeah, she doesn't want to, to sting, but bees, um, I'm gonna talk lots about honey in a moment, but I tell you what, you know, bees also produce, they produce beeswax, beeswax. Now bee, they have four glands underneath their abdomens so underneath their bottoms and they make this beeswax. And this is so, so important and crucial. And you can see here, and I wish everyone can oh, smell, it absolutely smells amazing, the smell of beeswax. And this is such an important and versatile um, product of bees. Now, what's, what do you think, you know, what's beeswax made from? You now, what do we make from beeswax? That was the most, one of the most things. That is candles. Now, pure beeswax candles. They are so, so important. They smell, they're actually good for the environment, good for your room, because they actually do something quite fancy. It's a little bit scientific, but I'll tell everyone. What they do is it produces what's called these negative ions. So the positive ions are things like dust and pollen, and burning a pure beeswax candle can help your room. So that's why they're important. A lot of candles can have some other um, waxes in there, things like say, um, there's like uh, paraffin wax or microcrystalline wax. And so candles are so, so uh, beautiful to burn and also to very, very um, symbolic as, as well. Um, now, another thing is as, uh, when bees are foraging, from flower to flower, what do you think they also, they're obviously collecting nectar, turn into honey, which we're gonna talk lots about in a second. But what do you, what else do you reckon they they collect? Well, they have these little, special little baskets on their back legs. So on their back legs, these little baskets. And what they do is actually collect pollen. <laughs> this is the pollen, so they collect pollen on their back legs. Now the pollen is really, really, that is fantastic. So the pollen is basically, that's their protein. So that's, you can see that tiny little there, if you can see that there. Why my fingers, we're gonna, you're gonna see why, what I've been doing uh, shortly, why I've got uh, paint on my fingers. Uh, but you can see the tiny little granules there. And the bees go to the flowers and they collect the pollen, they put it on their back legs. I put it on the back legs and they're taking the hive and that's their protein. So think of it like if you're eating chicken, 
right? So when they're eating, they're eating chicken, that's the bee's proteins. So what they use the pollen for is for the proteins. So what they produce a special milk. Um, they've got these special glands. This is a big word called phalangeal glands, just in their sort of cheeks behind their head there. And they produce this special milk to feed the babies. And you're gonna see the life cycle. Yeah, there's a life cycle there. And we're gonna see, you're gonna see shortly, you're gonna see shortly a video that I've done, um, which I was yesterday, we get to actually see, see it. So it starts off as an egg. So this is a worker bee. So it starts off as, a, as a, an egg. And then it turns into a pupae. And this is, and this is called metamorphosis. So, so like caterpillars, you know, there's different uh, types of metamorphosis. You've got a primitive metamorphosis and you've got this classical metamorphosis. And it turns into uh, this little uh, pupae here and then the bee will hatch. Now for a worker bee, as I said, they're all females, they're all girls, because the girls, they work the hardest. The boys are a little bit, uh, a little bit lazy <laughs> inside a beehive, a little bit more lazy. They don't do all that much. Uh, but with the, uh, with the workers, it takes 21 days for her to hatch. But what happens? Really interesting. This is super interesting. And this is why bees are such a complex creature with inside the hive. They're so complex. There is no boss. Everyone might think, who might be the boss inside a beehive? Well, a lot of people think the queen. The queen bee, is she the boss? Well, actually, no. Because what they do is they all work together. They work as a colony. They work together. So inside a beehive can be, you know, 5,000 to 50,000 bees. And they're all busy working, doing their thing here, as you can see see there doing lots and lots of work and they're working together so they're doing all sorts of things so what happens is 21 days so the queen will lay that egg and that worker bee will hatch 21 days and she gets uh, assigned a task and that task is they go through the ranks of working so they got to start off as cleaners they start off as like janitors so they help clean the hive because bees are incredibly hygienic uh, one of the most hygienic animals in the world. So they're absolutely incredible. And what they do is when they hatch, they start off as what we call a nurse bee, right? a nurse bee. And that nurse bee, what she does, so she'll hatch from here. And what she does is starts doing the cleaning. She's cleaning. So she'll, any little bits of uh, uh, mess or anything at all, a little bit of what we call detritus, like dirt. The, the bees will actually clean that up. But also too, as they go through the ranks, I'll start to help with the honeycomb, with the wax. So I'll start to help with that. And then I make that and I make that, that shape, as you can see just here, see this honeycomb shape. So the reason why that's a hexagonal and it is the strongest of any shape we could use inside a beehive. So it's actually the strongest, right? So if it was a circle, it'd be too much waste. So they can all join together really well. If it was a square, if it was a square, it wouldn't actually be very strong because that holds each hexagonal will hold the baby bees, um, also the pollen. They put the pollen inside there, but also the honey. Now we're going to talk about that. But what do you reckon? I said the bees collect four things. So one was nectar, which we're going to convert into honey. Two was pollen. What do you reckon number three and four is? What do you think three and four? I'm gonna have a, have a think. Well, everyone, I have a seat. This is my cup. This is my, I've got some water in it. This is my cup. Everything I do, see, my, this is my B cup. I love, it's my favorite cup. If you have an answer for Ben, pop it in the chat. Yeah. We can have a yeah. look at the chat. Great. Mom and Dad yeah. can put it in the chat for you. That's it. Yes. Yeah, let's have, a, let's have a look at the chat. So there'll be, so the four things, pollen and nectar, they also collect water. So what they do, all right, so inside a beehive is 34 degrees, no matter where in the world. Now, there aren't bees in the um, uh, Arctic and there's no bees in the Antarctic, but there's bees everywhere, everywhere there's bees. So what they do is it's 34 degrees. So bees from say Poland, where in winter, I've got friends in Poland and they can get to minus 25 degrees Celsius, minus 25. So your freezer sometimes is minus 18. So it's colder in your freeze in your freezer. 
Uh, but inside a beehive, it's 34 degrees. So, and this is why they produce honey. It actually keeps them warm. So that's why they, they produce that. So, but when, oh, what about the, the temperature when it's too hot? They've got to cool them if it's say, we get that hot weather here in summertime, or it could be somewhere else and it's really, really hot. What they bees do is they're clever. They're always thinking every little uh, problem they have, they always think, and they do really, really well. So what they do is the bees, these special bees, all right, will go foraging for water. They'll bring the water in and then they'll put it inside the hive or they'll pass it to another bee because some bees, are, all their job is to drink some water and hold the water, all right? What they do is that they'll, they'll deposit the water in the beehive. Then a whole bunch of bees will sit at the front of the entrance and fan and they'll create an evaporative cooler. So that water that's dehydrating is getting cooled, which is absolutely, how incredible is that? You know, so, because it's 34 degrees, if it gets too hot, obviously they don't like it. Or if it's too cold, they don't like it as well. So it's always 34 degrees. Now let's have a look at it in the chat. Um, honey, yes, so it's a good question. We're gonna talk lots about honey in a second, which is, is a beautiful ingredient. Um, what do you reckon the fourth one is? Now, a lot of people don't know this one, the number four. And I've got some in a jar here. Now, this is really special too. And this is a very special, see that there? Looks like a big, funny looking, looks like a piece of dirt. Now, what this is, this has all been put together because I collect this from the beehives. So this is a big word, boys and girls. This is called propolis, propolis. P-R-O-P-O-L-I-S. Now, what's special about propolis and why do bees collect it? It's got a beautiful smell. It's like a nice, to describe the smell, it's like, like this pine resin. But bees go to certain trees, things like conifer trees, pine trees, and other types of trees, and they collect it. Now, what they do with the propolis is they take it inside the hive and they will use that as like their glue, as their glue to actually put little, you know, if there's a little air hole and I want that draft of air because it's, you know, all that cold might be coming in, they get the propolis and they'll use it and sticky it all together. How incredible is that? Isn't that just amazing? So now what's special about propolis? We can actually use this and we can create like this is like a natural medicine right? and it's been scientifically proven to help things like sore throats or if you get a bad cut or a graze you put that on there because it's antibacterial and antifungal and that's why the bees collect this because this is really healthy inside a beehive so this is propolis and you can make all sorts of things um there's like little sprays you get like little sprays if you've got a sore throat and it actually it doesn't, the, the taste is very strong. So it's a bit like a medicine type taste, but it is really, really good. So propolis, that's the four things. Uh, nectar, it's converted into honey. Uh, they also collect water, pollen and propolis. So that's the four things that bees collect. Um, now, obviously uh, with, uh, and you can actually with the pollen too, I forgot to mention, pollen is super food. So superfood, as humans, we can eat it. Um, and it's really, really nice. It's got this earthy type taste. There's a little jar of it there. You can see that there, all the little pollen granules. And as a beekeeper, what I can do is I can collect this. It's got these special little traps, which is um, nice and easy. It doesn't hurt the bees at all. And they, they walk through it and it just goes, knock. And that little piece of pollen will fall off their back legs. And then what we do is we can just dry it just to take out the moisture. Because if we don't take out the moisture, it can go moldy. So we, we just give it a dry, so it's um, nice and dry, and you can eat this. And it's really, really nice. It's got a really earthy and it's full of all the vitamins and all the minerals. So it's like a, a superfood and really, really good for you. So um, good in smoothies, but it's got that earthy, rich taste. Now, obviously honey, who, who loves honey? Put your hand up. Everyone loves honey. <laughs> Me too. I love honey. Honey, I think I am mostly honey. I think I eat too much honey. Because so, honey is this beautiful, complex um, ingredient. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Honey is the only natural food 
to humans, to all of us, that does not have a shelf life. So what that means is this jar of honey, I can come back in 500 years time and it's still going to be edible, still edible. And the reason why the honey is it's got these sugars. And I'll talk about in a second how bees make it. But these special sugars, and it's got a low, what's called a pH. Now, what's pH? Now, basically, pH is the power of hydrogen, which has got to do with like, say, seven uh, is neutral. Anything below seven, say six, is acidic. And say above seven, would say eight, is alkaline. Um, and so honey is actually slightly acidic. So what happens is being these sugars, these special sugars and enzymes, what happens is um, it actually uh, will preserve and it's very, very healthy, healthy ingredient. And honey is also very, very important. It's, it's a medicine. And honey has been around for a long, long time. I've got this, now this one that's not from Egypt, but the Egyptians were, were actually collecting the honey all right, so they're collecting honey and they put in these special pots and kept it. And these are two very similar because in North Jerusalem, they only discovered this five, uh, five years ago in Northern Jerusalem. What happened is they found the first ever commercial beekeepers. They found these areas, these caves where they had all their pots and everything. It was only a recent discovery. And so that's why, you know, bees, bees are just so, so important. Now, how do bees make honey? So how do they make it? Uh, what happens is, so the bees will go to special flowers and now flowers can have, you know, sometimes flowers might not have much nectar or they might not have any nectar at all. So sometimes you might not see uh, bees on, say, roses. You know, sometimes roses, you know, might not see bees because they, there's no nectar but they might have pollen. But some think things say wattles, you know, you might see around the streets and everything, those bright yellow flowers, well, they're wattles. And um, sometimes bees don't get any nectar from them, but I'll tell you what bees love, is they love things like herbs, um, lavender, um, thyme, oregano, um, all these beautiful herbs um, um, uh, also, um, the Australian bush as well, or eucalyptus. In Australia, we have got over 700 species of eucalyptus, over 700 species, and the bees absolutely love them. So what happens is the bees will fly and they've got two, two special stomachs. So they've got a special one where they'll, they'll suck up all the nectar, so they'll suck it all up, Right? And they put it in a special stomach. And this is called their, their nectar stomach. Their other stomach is how they digest. A little bit like us is how they digest their, their food. So, and then what the little bee, what she will do is she will fly all the way back to the hive. And then she'll fly all the way back and she'll pass it to another bee. So she'll pass it. You can see she'll pass it from one to another and she'll pass it to another bee. And in this process, the bees have this, what's called their special enzymes. Now, I know there's a lot of big words with bees, but enzymes. And when they pass the, uh, the enzymes and the, the, the nectar to the bee, there's this amazing chemical conversion. Because what happens with the, with the nectar? So nectar from a flower has two types of sugars. So two types of sugars. One is sucrose which is very similar to like table sugar, which is what's used a lot. One is sucrose uh, and the other one is fructose, which is a fruit sugar. But this amazing, these, the bees almost create this magic. When they create the magic, these enzymes convert one of those sugars from sucrose into glucose. Now the fructose remains. So that's why that having honey is having honey is so so good for you uh, obviously not too much um, as I said I have honey every day every day and I just absolutely love it and particularly could dip things in it like dipping um, the apple in it is just beautiful you could put it on your food you could use it in cooking but 
with honey, it's super important that if you can, and there's some really um, some good beekeepers um, all around. And there's a friend of mine, Jonathan Landis, and he's a beekeeper uh, in Caulfield and he's absolutely fantastic beekeeper. And so it's always important to, to support those beekeepers as well, because you know, the problem is, it's interesting that you know honey, people can be sneaky can be a bit sneaky with honey because what they can do, because it's really sweet, it's really sweet, is they can put like sugars and things in, into the honey and cheat, which is terrible because, you know, believe it or not, honey is one of the, one of the most foods in the world where people cheat, um, is, which is which is really, really sad. So, um, so honey is really good. So, and that's why the honey will last for years and years and years. Now the honey will crystallize, uh, so what, what that means is real honey will go this hard texture. So if it goes hard, so it goes this really almost like um, almost like a block because you know the, the bees go to different flowers. When they go to different flowers, they get different nectars and different sugars and things. All right. So when they go there, what happens is um, we can have all these different components because sometimes this will stay nice and runny um, for a long period of time. Oh, who loves the smell of honey? Put your hand up. Yes. <laughs> the honey is just like, it's absolutely beautiful. Absolutely love it. But now if the honey crystallizes, so if you buy honey and it goes hard, that's fine. That's actually good because that's perfect on things. Like I can see someone having a banana, eating a banana there. Having having your, your um, um, <laughs> having honey on your banana is oh, a little piece of bread is beautiful. You know what I mean? It tastes, tastes really, really good. So if the honey goes this crystallized, um, don't worry, because you can put it into warm water. But I love it when it goes actually sort of crystallized and, and hard. So yeah, so that's all about honey and what makes it so special. Um, also too, I'm not sure boys and girls, have you heard of Manuka honey? Anyone heard of Manuka honey? Yes, Schmall's heard of Manuka honey. Now, Manuka honey, because as I said, um, Adina's heard of, yes, well done. Because um, with regards to the, you get the different nectars from different flowers. Now, what's so special about Manuka honey? Now, Manuka honey comes from a special, it's called a tea tree. And it's actually, it's everywhere, but some of them have this, what's called this activity, this special activity. And what it is, this is a big one. As I said, like with bees and beekeeping, there are lots of big words. Um, and it's called MGO. Now that stands for methyl glyoxal. Now what MGO is in this Manuka honey, it is actually like, it's like a medicine and it's been, it's proven, you know, science have proven that this Manuka honey is really, really good for you. And what happens is the higher the rating, the better it is. Now, this high rating, this will help people. So some people in hospital who might have had a, an injury or something, they're using the Manuka honey to fix that, which is absolutely incredible. One of God's gifts is this magical ingredient because it'll fix things where some medicines won't. So that's what makes it absolutely honey incredible. So yeah, absolutely love it. Absolutely love honey. And it comes in different flavors too. Because if we look at, say, we go to say Tasmania, uh, in Tasmania, they've got this special one called Leatherwood honey. And it's a very strong honey. Now, some people don't like it. Some people, it's very, you know, very, got lots of floral smells and taste, which is, um, yeah, which is uh, very strong. But then you get some mild honeys. Like there's one particular honey, this eucalyptus honey called yellow box. And it's a special little eucalyptus tree. And it's a very nice honey. So it's very, very complex. So now I've got a little video um, and I'm going to show, um, it goes for four minutes and I might even talk a little bit um, while we're on there um, about the video. And then I'm going to show everyone what I do here in the, uh, in the factory. And then at the end, if there's any questions, any questions, yeah, you've got me for as long as you want. Any questions you want to know anything about bees or anything about, um, uh, about honey, about beeswax, about propolis, you know, let me know. So think of some really good questions. So I think um, share screen, just bear, um, can you, Schmall, can you just please allow me to share the screen? I've just got a YouTube video.
I will make you a co-host, one second. Thank you. So everyone, so while Shmuel's doing that, um, he's done that for me, thank you. So this is, this is yesterday. All right, so this little video, let me, I should, I think, here we go. Everybody, please mute besides Ben. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so this this here, this here was, um, this here was out in an area called Stanhope. So so this is where some of my bees are. So after I take them to, um, they've been pollinating almonds up near the border of New South Wales. What happens is, Actually, I take them here. So this is in a beautiful country. Now you can see what I do because as far as beekeeping goes, I need a smoker. So what happens is you give the smoke to the bees and, and that calms them down. And what it does when it calms them down, the bees makes them all nice and sort of relaxed. We'll see what I'm talking about. So it's very important. You can hear the bees buzzing. Ben, you're not sharing your screen. We can't see anything. Oh, you can't see anything. Oh, okay, hang on. Sorry. Bear with me. So here we are. We're checking this bee eye here. And look at those beautiful bees. Oh, how's that? Share screen. Hang on. So Our bear with me. It takes 12 bees their whole life just hang to on. make. So can everyone see my screen now? Yep. Yeah. Right. Okay, just bear with me. Yes. Okay, sorry. Let me, these are my videos. I've done a video. Let me find it. Uh, here it is over here. This is so. This is a video I've done done for everyone. I'm just going to move this. Okay. All right. Let me just go. We'll go back to the start. So there we go. Okay. All right. Can everyone see that? Awesome, you thank you. Here, so you can see here. So this is out in the country. So this is this is about almost three hours away from yes. driving, uh, driving from Melbourne. So almost three hours away. So these are my bees. Uh, and as I said, I did this one yesterday. It's a little video for everyone. And you can see there, I'm giving them the smoke. So what the smoke does is it calms the bees. Now you can see I'm wearing a special suit, but you can see I'm also I'm uh, I've got no gloves on. Did everyone notice that? I got no gloves on. And the thing is, the bees are very calm. By giving them smoke, uh, it actually calms the bees. So we'll see. So here we are. We're checking this bee over here. And look at those beautiful bees. How nice is that? It takes 12 bees their whole life just to make half a teaspoon. Look at making sure they're all good. Beautiful bees. We need bees. So we're just going to have a look and uh, open them up. You can see you can see there. I give them smoke, and and what does the smoke does? It just makes them nice and calm. So you see, I don't have any gloves on. So what I, what happens is I go nice and nice and slow. Can you see him just there? So he's got the big eyes. So he's a drone. So he's a boy bee. Queen can be absolutely anywhere. Yeah, now, yeah. so the queen, the queen, she's only, and I'm going to show everyone in a second what the queen looks like. She's only a little bit bigger. So the queen is only a, a little bit bigger than the workers. Please stop drawing on the screen, whoever's drawing on the screen. That's not fair for everyone else. Please stop drawing on the screen. And everyone, you can see see the country. Look at look at all that area, and and that particular see those beautiful yellow flowers. 
those, those little yellow flowers is called canola. So it's canola and it's really good and really healthy for the bees because it's got plenty of nectar and plenty of pollen. So the bees absolutely love it. And I'm so lucky I get to do what I love. Everyone, while you're watching, you can think of some good questions for Ben and you can ask mum and dad to pop them in the chat and Ben will answer all our questions after the video. Any question about bees and honey? Silver? There we go. So let me get rid of that one. So as Shmuel said, um, any any questions? We'll do them at the end, and anything at all. Uh, let, me, let me just get rid of this one. Uh, um, how do I put it down? All right. Just bear with me two seconds, uh, and I'll just bring this one back. Dun, 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 dun. I was asking me to share. All right. All right. Oh, lots of questions coming in. That's great. Oh, lots of questions. That's awesome. That's, that's good. Let's stop sharing. There we go. Okay. Thank awesome. You, ben. Now, now um, you can see, as I said before, the queen. So you can see the queen. She's only a little bit bigger. Uh, I couldn't find her in that video because the weather was starting to get cold. And you could see it was sort of, that was getting in yesterday afternoon. And what happens is the bees, she can hide, but she's only a little bit bigger. She's only about 20% bigger. But what's interesting, a lot of people think that the queen is the boss, but she's actually not. Her brain is actually, even though she's bigger than a worker, is actually her brain is smaller than a worker bee. Now, this is an interesting one um, is the size of a bee's brain is the size of a sesame seed. Now, when you think about it, that's pretty, that's incredible. Size of a sesame seed. Isn't that amazing? As far as the size of a bee's brain. So that's why they're so smart and such a complex uh, creature. And you can see there's some flying, you can hear them buzzing. How, how nice is that sound? It's the, the smells. And as I said, I'm so lucky what I do. I actually wrote a book too uh, last year. It's called uh, For the Love of Bees because I just absolutely love bees. Um, now, soon we're going to have happens during springtime. This is the way the, the bees uh, reproduce. It's called swarming. So this is how they, how they reproduce. So that's where the old queen, along with half the workers, leave the, the parent colony, leave the hive and go looking for a new hive. So soon I get ready for all these, um, all the swarms. Now you might've seen before, and here's one, see this little tiny little blue thing. What we can do as beekeepers, we can actually mark our queens. We put a tiny, as you imagine, so small, and it doesn't hurt her. She doesn't even feel it. She doesn't even know it's on there. And this is like a special little number. So we can see that's number 34. So we can actually see what, you know, what our bees are doing because bees have got different genetics. So sometimes they really, they might do different things. They might work when it's colder. They might not work when it's colder. So it's absolutely amazing. Uh, and that's why I absolutely love bees. Now I'm gonna show you my little factory. Um, so I have a little factory in Narawadi, um, which is not far from, from everyone. And this is kind of like, now you're gonna to have to mind the mess in my factory um, after so mine, uh, I'm usually very clean, but over the last two weeks, it's been very, very busy. And I'm gonna show you where I do the candles. I don't do any honey processing here. I use a special commercial kitchen uh, to do the honey processing, but we make the candles here and you're gonna see why I've got paint on my fingers. Who's excited to, uh, to go uh, have a look? And then what we're gonna do, oh, look at these, got some amazing questions. 
Uh, wow, I'm, I am so looking forward to answering. If you think of any more questions, there's a real, I can see, oh, they are brilliant. There's a good one there, do bees sleep? And I'm gonna tell you all about that. So who wants to see my little factory uh, where I do all, the, make all the candles and things? Awesome, so I'm just gonna walk around with my computer. Now you can see here, oh, this is, this is my studio. So I have like a little podcast uh, and you can see, see here, these are bees. So these have actually been sprayed on. It took each bee, the artist, three hours to put them on. So this is a little studio uh, where I do my little, my little podcast. And we're gonna walk into, in here. It's only a small factory. And you can see here where I do all the candles. So you can see there, so all these candles, because they're actually, they're quite difficult to make, even though it's very simple. You know, making candles has, uh, they've got three ingredients uh, um, in, a, in a beeswax candle. Uh, I'll see if you get the third one. It's obviously got beeswax. It's got a pure cotton wick. And what do you reckon the third ingredient is? And they're made. What do you reckon the third? They're made with love. <laughs> That's the third ingredient when I, make, uh, when I make the candles. So we can see I do that there. Um, so it's all a little bit, as I said, a little bit, a little bit messy in here, but you can see the boxes. Oh yeah, there's lots here. So these are one boxes that I make. So these just here, uh, what I start a colony of bees in. So, and I make, make lots and lots of bees. So the bees, I work with them and, uh, how we, this is how we do, uh, all the small boxes. Cause I'll start in a small box in here. And you can see here, there's all my little products. I've got like a little online shop. Um, and this is, I'll show you everyone. This is why I've got paint. <laughs> you can see why I got paint. So on there, so this is my registration. So as a beekeeper, you got to have this special number. And uh, my surname is Moore. Um, it says M376. So that's why I've got to spray paint them on because there's special rules with bees. Um, there's special um, things with bees. We've got to make sure you've got to be registered. Uh, and it's a special, it's called the DPI. So the Department of Primary Industries. So we're gonna walk some here. You can see there I've got my lift, uh, my forklift, where I keep all lots of things up there. Can you see up there, everyone? That's where I keep the frames. And this is what I've been doing is getting, putting the spray paint on and let's have a look here. Putting the spray paint on these boxes and been putting in the, the frames. So what I've been doing, so this is where the bees, so this is pure beeswax. I don't use plastic because um, it's not so good for the bees, but this is natural. So this is um, special Australian pine and it's got the, um, this is that you can see, you can see my hand behind it. So it's a thin piece of wax of foundation. So this is what the bees will draw from that. I wish everyone can smell. You can see me and you can hear me. But the smell is absolutely delightful. I love the smell of beeswax. Oh, it's so, and I love the smell of honey too. So you can see, so I'm getting all these ready because what happens is tomorrow, um, we're gonna go back up to the country and, um, and check on the bees and give these bees some room so they, um, so they actually grow, so they get bigger and bigger. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I think it's back to front. I'm not sure if anyone can see that. Maybe, but it's back to front of my screen. So I'm not sure if it's back to front of yours, but it's, uh, there's my website, bensbees.com.au, my phone number. Because sometimes if there's a farmer or someone sees the bees, they don't know who they are, they can always call me. And that's from the, the registration, M376. So I've got to do lots of driving. Would you believe, I know most people, um, uh, uh, I shut home and uh, not do anything, but I'm lucky because I've got to look after the bees. At the moment, I'm driving more than 1,500 kilometers a week. <laughs> I do lots of driving. So that's why I think I'm a little bit chubby because of all the honey and all the driving I do. So, but I absolutely love it. So that's my little factory. Um, and you can see it's a little bit messy there because I've just been uh, so getting ready. Um, the bees are always working. And when the bees are working, um, I'm almost always working too. 
So um, you can see lots of things there. So all the frames, a lot of these jobs actually as a beekeeper, we do have a winter. So there's 5,000 frames, those frames that go inside the beehive, there's 5,000 of them, which we don't have a winter. So, um, so yeah, so now I'm gonna go back into my studio because I am so excited. Um, oh, here's a little, these, um, these little hampers, there's a couple of little, there's a little hampers uh, for candles and things that, that people buy off me. But I'm so excited to answer these questions because I saw they are absolutely fantastic. Oh, this is, I'm so excited. These are really, these are really good questions. Let's have a look. Okay. All right. Um, why do bees sting? Well, I sort of touched base a little bit on that, but I'll talk about that in detail. There's a really good question by Jazzy. Um, why do bees sting? It's their defense because what happens is, is the bees are going to protect their, their honey, uh, their baby bees. So they have these stingers and the stingers, they do hurt. Um, now, someone I think might have asked me, uh, have I ever been stung before? Now, this is going to seem pretty crazy. Uh, because I've been staying that many times, I barely feel it on my hands. It is incredible. I know. And make sure, boys and girls, if you see bees in the garden, don't don't be scared of them. Just let them do their thing. Uh, they won't sting you. But because I get stung that many times, I've never. I um yeah, I don't feel it. Um, but here, I'll tell you a funny story for everyone. I had to get. This is about maybe probably over five years ago. I had to get a wisdom tooth pulled out because it was uh, just one wisdom tooth. All the others were good, but one up the top of you had to be pulled out. Now, the, the dentist, when they pulled the dentist, had to use this anesthetic, right? This special anesthetic. And do you know what? Because I've been stung tens of thousands of times over the years, the anesthetic didn't work. I could feel it. It was, that was really, really crazy. So that was amazing. So that's an amazing thing that and apparently learning afterwards, that happens uh, to a lot of beekeepers. So, um, but as I said, don't you be scared of bees. Um, uh, am I a cookie? I'll tell you what, I reckon I'm <laughs> am I a cookie. I love that. That's funny. It's a cookie. I, I put honey in everything. So, uh, so in theory, to answer that question uh, from, from Dina, am I a cookie? The answer is going to be yes, because I put honey in everything, including the biscuits and the cookies. So the answer is yes. Um, uh, Ariel, do bees sleep? Now, this is a brilliant question this is amazing and i'm going to talk about that because they bees need to sleep because what happens let's say um you don't sleep much what happens if you don't sleep much you get tired you get grumpy you, you might fighting with your brother or your sister or you might be a little bit naughty to mom dad grandparents or a guardian you might be a little bit grumpy well it's the same with bees so what happens is they've done this interesting little test where every hour at night time, they give the little bee hive a little shake, just a little shake just to wake them up. And they're actually proven that the bees needed to sleep because what happens is the bees got grumpy and also too, they didn't work as hard. So yeah, very, very interesting. Um, here's another brilliant question. Oh, you, Absolutely fantastic questions, everyone. These are really good. What is the lifespan of bees? And how do bees cope with heavy rain? Wow, this is really, really good. So, so lifespan of a bee. So as far as the worker bee, uh, during winter, there's variables there, depending around the world, but let's, we're gonna use this for us, us in Melbourne. What happens is the, um, the lifespan of a worker bee during winter time is about three to sort of four months. But during springtime, the little bee, she will only live for up to 40 days because her little wings will wear out. So she'll die. And that's why the queen will have to 2,000 eggs per day. But the queen, she can live for up to seven years, seven years, the queen. So um, so really, really good question. And um, with heavy rain. So what happens is when it's heavy rain, as long as the, the hive is nice and inside and sort of not getting water inside it the bees will be okay so it's not a problem with the bees they will be fine sometimes what can happen we can have too much rain the bees can't forage for their nectar so that's why it's important me as a beekeeper i leave plenty of honey for the bees so that's very very important oh there's a good question 
Um, the Belbins, bee venom. What is bee sting therapy good for available in Australia? That, I think that, that's, a, that's a question for one of parents actually, because that's a really good question. So this is called, it's actually called apotherapy. Now bees in their venom, and now once again, these are really big words, these words, boys and girls, um, but they have this special in their venom, it's called apitoxin. All right, now this apitoxin does help and it helps with people with like arthritis. If they get arthritis in their joints and things, it helps and it helps as a natural medicine for so many different reasons. Now, the other thing is too, when they harvest the venom, you, these days you don't have to hurt the bee. So the bee, what she can do, you have these special little, these little glass and it's electrified. And the bee can come and sting the glass, but she doesn't die. And that, that venom will crystallize and you can harvest that venom. And that venom is worth about $300 a gram, which is amazing. It's with a gram, tiny amount. And so they're using a, a lot of it in medical research. Um, so very, very fantastic. And that's why bees are so important. You know, they do so many wonderful things. Uh, and especially, obviously, honey. I just, I'm always, whenever I say the word honey, I start to dribble because I just love it so much. Um, um, uh, how, do, how do you remove a beehive in your garden? Now, um, really, that's a really good question too. There's so many variables there. Now, depending on when the bees, uh, how they are, they're sort of situated. If they're like this, this swarm, they're like that. It's a bit more straightforward, which we see in spring and early summer. Sometimes if they're in a tree, we might have to cut the tree down. Or, or sometimes the best thing to do is actually just leave them there. Um, so um, uh, that's it. Um, uh, there go. My, my child wants to say, we have some Ben's bees and they're loving looking after them. And they're oh, fantastic. Sheree, <laughs> thank you, Sheree. Thank you so much. Um, had a, a Sam, question from Sam. How do bees make the beeswax? Um, that, that's those little glands that they have just underneath their just underneath their abdomen, underneath their bottom, because the bees, being an insect, being what's called an invertebrate, so it means that they they've got no skeleton like us humans. It's on the outside, so they've got a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. So it's like the head, the chest, and their bottom and their legs, and under, underneath their their bottom, they've got their four pairs of glands, eight glands, and that's how they um, make the special beeswax. Um, uh, ooh, oh, Ronnie, good question there. Love that question, Ronnie. When a bee dies, how does the next queen take its place? Now, this is absolutely an incredible process, what happens here. So let's say something. We're going to go say worst thing that could happen. Let's say me, I'm tired and I accidentally, now this has never happened, but hypothetically, so pretending I accidentally killed the queen. What happens inside the hive? They recognize that. They go, wow, we've got no queen. So they're, they're, the whole vibrations within the hive changes. What will then happen? Those little larvae, um, which I had a photo before, there's tiny little larvae that are, that are 24 hours of age. The bees will go, okay, let's give around about 10 to 12 excess royal jelly. So it's like the bees milk. Uh, and they give it lots of it. And all of a sudden the queen will develop. Now she develops a bit earlier. It takes her 16 days to actually hatch. But this is what's fascinating. So you can have about 10 to 12. The first queen that hatches will go around and she will sting all the other all the other queens, and she will be the successor. So she'll be the boss queen. All right. So how incredible is that? So great question there, Ronnie. Uh, so and that's the queen. Ah, um, uh, boy, boy, Sadie. Do bees make noises with their mouths or just their wings? Now it's actually their wings and the way they vibrate. So a little bit like a similar to like a cricket. It's actually their wing muscles how they vibrate. So a little bit similar. And uh, uh, that's a good question because that goes back to what with Ronnie. That what can happen is the queens can make a piping noise, and it's, and it's quite rare. Uh, I've heard it a few times and it's this like piping, it's like beep, and it's like this beep, um, and it's this piping noise that the queens make. So they can actually make it. Um, um, Jessica, good, good question, thank you. Where can we buy honey from? Um, so I've got a website, bensbees.com.au. 
uh, jump on to that um, or you can send me a text, my phone number. You'll find me. Uh, if you go Ben's Bees, you'll find me because you, know you know what I love to? Um, I'm, I'm, what I love is actually do a bit with TV. I'm not sure if any, has anyone seen me on TV before? Has anyone seen me on TV? Well, I'm actually like, I've been do a bit on TV now, slow down a bit, but soon, hopefully, I'm going to do, I'm not sure if everyone has Netflix, but I'm going to do a documentary on bees on Netflix. But I've been lucky. I've been on uh, uh, Channel 7, Channel 9, Channel 10, uh, the project. So, um, so I, cause I love, I, I just love doing this, talking to people about bees. Absolutely love it. So, that, so bensbees.com.au. Um, what do bees eat? That is a, that's a great question because what bees eat. So when I, we saw in the video, they had had before what they the eat is, is the honey so they'll actually eat the honey as well as the pollen so they make their special pollen um now also too does anyone get hay fever so if, if you get hay fever yes small putty stand up gets hay fever so what you can do small is you can actually have some honey from your area now let's say if you're in say caulfield or or say Moorabark or Croydon, what can happen? Doesn't matter. You can have honey from that local area. It doesn't have to be like right close. But if you're in, say, in a country like, say, you know, say Horsham or Mildura, won't work as much. But you have honey and you have two teaspoons twice per day. What happens is honey from a beekeeper um, that's got this special pollen in it. Uh, what happens is it can help with hay fever and it's, and it's called immunotherapy. Now it doesn't happen with everyone. And for those who don't have hay fever, uh, that's great because what happens is your eyes can get watery, you're sneezing all the time. And so, um, yeah, so you're having it twice a day, but the trick is, is make sure, um, oh, this is cold water in here, but if you do, don't put it in hot tea because hot tea, uh, it's gonna, anything hot is gonna denature all those good things inside the hive. So, um, but uh, it's a good question there. Um, how many bees are there, EV? That was a good question. How many bees? I can vary anywhere from sort of you know five thousand to fifty thousand bees. So they can have uh, can sort of vary. Um, now, how many bees? How many years the bees live for? Now, well, actually, the queen. So I touched base on the worker bees, but a queen bee can live up to seven years. Seven years, so so that's some absolutely incredible. Um, ah, good question. Do I clip? Uh, do you clip the queen the queen bee's wings? The answer is no. To be honest, uh, that's a question from an adult, I think. Um, so that question there, really good question. Um, th for some reason, they do that sometimes in America. So I'm not sure. I've never seen it done here. There is nothing to be gained from doing it. I'm not sure why people have done that. Because um, what happens is the queen, she can't, when she swarms, so when she does this, she can't do that properly. So as she'll sit on the ground. So no, I've never done it. There's no need to do it um, so at all. But that's a, that's a really good question too. Is it, uh, so I've got another question here. RH, is it healthy to get stung? Now, for me, um, I think I'm, uh, maybe I'm a bit crazy, almost need to get stung by bees because <laughs> I just I almost feed off the bees. But, but for some people, some people can be allergic. Now it's less than 2% of the population. So it's not many, so it's not many people at all. But some people can be allergic to bees. Um, so yeah, so that can happen. Um, so that's why if you just, if you see bees in your garden, uh, flying around, doing their thing, they're not going to hurt you. So don't worry, but don't try and pick them up. Don't, don't be silly like me, um, and try and pick them up. Just leave them do their thing. Um, uh, how do the worker bees stay safe? Well, what they do, another good question, Ariel, really good question. What happens is there is they all work together. So remember, there's no boss inside a hive. Every bee is the boss because they work together as a collective, like almost like a society, their own society, and they work together. So the more they work together, the better success the colony will have. So that's why they do do really, really, really well. Um, what happens to the bees um, if their hive is destroyed? So if something happens to the hive, okay, I'll use a good example. Um, tomorrow, I've got a, a tree fell down and it was a tree and it was a, this is in um, Mount Evelyn, so towards the Dandenong Ranges. Um, what happened is it was a tree and it had a beehive inside the tree and the tree fell down. 
and um, it, was, and it, it got smashed. But what happened is the bees were able to fix it up with a bit of work. It's been there for a couple of weeks. I've left it be. What I'll do is I'm going to, because it's going to be a bit warmer tomorrow, I'll get my chainsaw um, and I'm going to chainsaw that section and I'll take that away and I'll put them into a hive like what we saw. Remember we were in, inside the factory before? These beehives with the frames. And I'll put them into that and I'll give them some warmth and obviously some love and they will do fine. So, um, so yeah, so that's a really, really good question there. Um, ben, Ben, let's yeah. take two, two final questions. Okay, yes. Now I can talk, I, I can talk for hours about bees. You're amazing. Um, <laughs> um, there's a, two questions. Two questions. Um, oh, there's a, okay, okay, someone's got to say, number one, first question. Um, do the bees get into fights? That is a great question. Um, I, I'm really impressed by everyone's questions. Yeah, absolutely. These are fantastic. The answer is yes, I can. But what happens is it's from different hives. It's not within their own hive because they get along well. But let's say there's a hive, say, you know, in another direction or maybe a kilometre down the road. What can happen is they can do something a little bit naughty. They can steal each other's honey. From the, from the hives, they can steal it. So what they do is that, and that's when they'll fight. So what happens is the guard bees, will, they'll fight and stop that from happening. So yes, they can they can fight. And how, you can ask me, how do they know who's from what colony? Well, it's interesting. They smell different. So each colony has its own unique, it's called a pheromone. So a pheromone signature, their own smells. And so uh, that's why, how they know. So that's a good question. Um, oh, Sam asked another good question. How many bees do I have? Um, so I just recently counted them. Um, it was 1.8 million, 624,027 um, when I just counted them. Uh, I do a stock take every week of how many bees I've got. I give them all names, um, but I think we better close up on that because we'll be here for the next um, uh, four days as I tell you all their names. But, but thank you. <laughs> Just want to say thank you, everyone, um, for having me. Shana Tova, yeah, absolutely amazing. Good questions, brilliant questions, and thank you so much for having me. Oh, my goodness. Thank Everybody you. Has to thank Ben. That was unbelievable. Ben, thank you for sharing your wisdom and your knowledge and your expertise you. and your passion with us for adults and children alike. Thank you. Keep up the great work. And to everyone here, Shana Tova Umetuka. When you eat the honey, you, you can think about Ben's talk and really enjoy the challah in the honey and the apple in the honey and really appreciate the gift that God has given us in bees and honey. What a great gift. And thank you, Ben, for sharing that with us. Good. Thanks, Ben. Very good. 50, you can stop the recordings.